On the news, Nigeria Air Force kills terrorists during raid on Iswap hideout. Supreme Court upholds 12 years jail term for ex Saraba Governor Jolly Yame. And one of Asia's most trafficked mammals, pangolin, identified as potential link for coronavirus outbreak. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. President Muhammad Buhari has departed Abuja for a five-day trip to Ethiopia. He departed from the Abuja airport for Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to attend the 33rd honorary session of heads of state and government of the African Union, AU, on Friday. The theme of the summit is silencing the guns, creating conducive conditions for Africa's development. After the AU summit, the presidency said Buhari would begin a state visit to Ethiopia on February 11th at the invitation of the Ethiopian Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed. The Nigerian Air Force Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commodore Ibikule Darmola said the NAF has destroyed compounds housed in Islamic State of West Africa province terrorists in Kazanga, a local government area of Borno State. In a statement on Friday in Abuja, Darmola said the Air Force achieved this through the Air Tax Force of Operation Lafia Doli. He said the airstrikes were executed on February 5th following intelligence reports that some ESWAP members who relocated from nearby Tungule have settled in the area. According to him, the reports show that some ISWAP elements have set up camps in a cluster of compounds in Kaza, along with their logistic supplies. <clears throat> Senate Minority Leader A. Naya Aberibe has been explaining why he called for the resignation of President Muhammadu Buhari. In an exclusive interview with TV360 Nigeria, the lawmaker explains that a lot more needs to be done to tackle insecurity in the country. And he also expressed his thoughts on the 2023 Igbo presidency project. Tinji Oye in our reports. Mr. President, because we have to get to the root of this matter, I can only say one thing. Those who live by propaganda will die by propaganda. Uh, minority leader. He made headlines when he called for the resignation of the president. He has been called many names on the account of this, while some of his colleagues also criticized him for the call. But Senator Eyinaya Baribe is not backing down. He told TV360 that the call is not against the person of Mr. President, but the interest of Nigeria. Although another lawmaker disagrees with him. I have made my position known. If you're in a hole, don't continue digging. So, you got a set of people, doesn't matter whether you trust them, can they do the job? Once they're unable to, then don't forget we're dealing with lives here. The unfortunate thing is this ostrich syndrome that we are having where people bury their heads in the sand and refuse to see reality around it that's why i said on the floor that day that reality is no respecter of persons or nations it confronts you you can't go from abuja to kaduna that is the worst thing that we can ever see. And everybody now ran to start to use the train. And all of a sudden, the same bandits are now going to the train station to attack those alighting from the train. So, what would the ordinary person in Nigeria do? You see, when you have headache, you don't cut the head. You apply a palliative. To the head. Unfortunately, the art of resignation in our electoral democracy is, is alien. Uh, the, the president was elected to, to be in office for four years to address this kind of problem, not to run away from it, not to abdicate responsibility. Resign to who? For, for who? 
when he's elected to solve a problem. Re resignation in itself uh, it will be an admission of irresponsibility. The reason why he was re-elected is because people saw uh, capacity in him to address the problem. Abari Bey, I think, started his argument as a statesman and ended it as a politician. On the 2023 Igbo presidency, the lawmaker believes the Southeast need to fight for the slot rather than expecting power to be ceded to it. Show me by example. A man does not want you to be his houseboy. Doesn't even want you to be a gate man. And so he tells you, don't worry, you're going to be the master of the house. And you want to believe him. How? That in today's government, show me that person that is being groomed in some way. Because if you're being groomed in some way, then you must be there. How are you going to be there if you're not there? Abaribe says the country has great potentials and will progress rapidly with the right leadership. From Abuja, Tunji Oye, TV360 News. The Supreme Court has affirmed the judgment of the Court of Appeal, which sentenced former governor of Taraba State, Jolin Yameh, to 12 years imprisonment for breach of trust and misappropriation of public funds. The Apex Court, however, held that the Appeal Court has no right to impose those fines, which sum into hundreds of millions, thereby setting aside the fines. Jolin Yameh had earlier appealed the November 16, 2018 Court of Appeal judgment which affirmed his conviction by an FCT High Court. He approached the Supreme Court to, among other things, evaluate the evidence which was, uh, with which he was convicted, review his sentences, and verify whether the charges were valid. The Interparty Advisory Council of Nigeria has asked the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to reverse its Thursday's decision of the registering 74 political parties IPAC said the decision was taken without observing due process and provisions of the law. The council's national legal advisor, Chukudi Ezeobika, made its position known in a statement made available to journalists in Abuja. Ezeobika said IPAC was aware of an action instituted at the Federal High Court by 33 political parties who are members of the council, uh, seeking, amongst other things, an order restraining INEC from the registering concerned political parties pending the determination of the suit. He added that the court, on hearing the motion for an interlocutory injunction on January 23rd, 2020, adjourned the matter till February 17th, 2020, for ruling. The Adamawa State Police Command says it has arrested 26 suspected kidnappers who specialized in terrorizing communities in the state. The spokesman of the command, Suleiman Njururi, made the disclosure while parading the suspects on Friday in Yola. The spokesman disclosed that the suspects, including a minor, were members of a notorious gang terrorizing people in Gombe, Maiha, and Fufuri local government areas of Adamoa State. Unjuri added that the police also busted a four-man syndicate who specialized in car theft at Jimeta Modern Market, adding that three vehicles have been recovered from the suspect. He said that investigations are ongoing into the case, adding that a suspect would be charged to court. All children of a Kaduna-based medical doctor, Philip Pataga, who were abducted in January, have been released by their abductors. They were released around 7 p.m. on Thursday night. The two children, who are identified as Christabel and Jasmine, were abducted alongside their mother from their residence at Juji area of Chikun local government area of Kaduna State on January 25th. The kidnappers had earlier demanded a 150 million naira ransom for the release, but killed their mother after the family failed to pay the money. The efforts of security agencies in Nigeria to reduce insecurity has received a massive boost following the official launch of Prime Alerts Nigeria. Prime Alerts is an SOS alert system that helps protect and save lives. It is founded with the intentions to breach the communication gap between the distressed citizens and emergency response agencies within Nigeria. Speaking at the launch in Abuja, Chief Operating Officer of Prime Alert Nigeria, Ibok Ofyong, says the success of the app is a function 
of an engagement with core emergency services and first responders in the country. Once you're feeling unsafe, all you need to do is simply press that button, this SOS button, and it goes round. We have a line that goes round. What that does is that it triggers, you know, an alert to us, and then it sends a text message to your five carers. Okay. Once that happens, what we will do on our own part is that we would try to contact you first, and then contact your carers, and then also contact the responders. That which is the police dilemma based on what kind of emergency you have. Okay, so the whole idea is because we know that a lot of people do not have access to numbers to reach the police, or most people don't even have uh, those numbers saved on their phones. But this is easier because instead of you scrolling down and start looking for you know a number to dial, just press the button, and within a second you know it just sends out text message, and all your responders receive the text message. And the interesting thing is that you know when they receive the text message, they can actually track to know exactly your location. Now, but you see, we're talking about preventive here. Yeah. Preventive. We're talking about preventive. We're not going to talk about the fact that in any society, there are always criminals that go to the, I mean, to the history. But our police, they're very good in what they do. But Prime Alert is also here to even assist both themselves, and especially the masses. So when you receive it, you might know someone, like I earlier explained, you might know someone that is high. You might know the leader of the vigilante in your area. You could know things that we do not know. So whoever is listing you as a carer believes that in an emergency situation that you will, you will be there to assist. The person has that confidence in you that if you hear that I'm kidnapped, you will help in the rescue. If you know I am in distress, you will come to my rescue. Speakers at the Real Money of Lagos have challenged youth in Nigeria to take up the challenges created by the economic opportunities to build their career and earn a standard of living. Speakers are, and speaking at the maiden edition of Wealth Summit, the speaker said Lagos is one of the most populated cities in the world, which has hidden gold mine in the real estate sector. The speaker said that Lagos City, which is full of both corporate and informal hustlers, uh, the benefit and opportunities in the sector and go around and overall improve the quality of life of many Lagosians and non Lagosians. The Nigerian youth should not be discouraged. For a very long time, they have been ignored, they have been abandoned, they have not really got what they're supposed to have gotten. So, but thank God because they see after strength, they believe in themselves. So, I will just encourage them that this is their time. This is a new decade, this is 2020, this is the time for them to put their name in history. This is time for them to take what belongs to them and this is time for them to make sure that they, they believe in this country and make this country proud by, you know, coming together and do that which they have been, which have been deposited in their lives. The way the program has been structured, especially for today, it has been targeted to ensure that everybody has a pathway. So anyone who was here today will have a change of orientation will understand that the real money of lagos is in the hand of people you need principles you need structures you need networking to be able to to to, to attract it so everybody here uh, you know that nigerian is nigeria the, the environment that we live in we are more of the youth so this has been created to align the youth to ensure that they have the right decision because information when it comes to you it is not just what you hear, it's about what you do with what you hear. That's what determines whether you get the result. You're still watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. We'll be right back. Hello Lagosians, my name is Aki Ambayomi, I'm the Commissioner of Health for Lagos. I'm here to tell you about this new infection that's going around the world. It's called the coronavirus. It emanated in China. It came from the animal kingdom. It has affected 17 countries. About 4,590 patients have been affected with about 106 deaths to date. It has typical symptoms, headache, running nose, cough, sore throat, muscle ache, high fever, difficulty breathing, pneumonia perhaps, 
And if you feel that you are experiencing any of these symptoms and you've had a contact either by virtue of travel to Southeast Asia or people that have come from Southeast Asia, we would like you to present to one of our general hospitals. Here in Lagos, we're ramping up our capacity. Our general hospitals are getting more in tune with this situation. We're increasing our surveillance at the airports. We're building our emergency operations center where we can harmonize our response to this infection. Please, Lagosians, take this situation seriously and contact any of the numbers that we're going to display on the screen for you. This message is from the Lagos State Ministry of Health. Welcome back, and it's over now to Onyi Adekunle for the latest business story. Thank you, Aneta. Nigeria's external reserves recorded a decline from $42.54 billion as of the beginning of 2017 to $38.07 billion naira as of the end of, of December, the $4.47 billion decline, according to data obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria, represents a decline of 10.5%. Foreign exchange reserves are assets held on reserve by a monetary authority in foreign currencies. These reserves are used to back liabilities and influence monetary policy. They include bank, foreign banknotes, deposit bonds, treasury bills, and other foreign government securities. These assets serve many purposes but are most significantly held to ensure that the government or its agency has backup funds if the national currency rapidly devalues. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, says it is targeting about 8.5 trillion re Naira revenue for the country in 2020. The executive chairman of the FIRS, Mohamed Nami, disclosed this at the 2020 corporate plan retreat in Abuja on Friday. Nami said that the 2020 target was slightly lower than the 2019 target by about 300 billion Naira. He explained that the 8.5 trillion Naira target was broken down into an oil tax target of 3.6 trillion Naira and a non-oil tax target of 4.8 trillion naira. He stated that assessing the services performance in the recent past, one, one could look at the 2020 target as ambitious, but it was achievable. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has condemned the federal government's move to increase the country's value-added tax from 5% to 7.5%, which has since taken effect from February 1, 2020. The Director General of the Association, Shegun Kadiri, made this call in an interview with TV360 Nigeria. Kadri said the increase of the VAT will have an adverse effect on consumers as a result of a hike in cost price. I don't think the increase in VAT is good for Nigeria. It is not. It is not good for Nigeria. And uh, the arguments that have been raised, sometimes when you subject them to rigorous analysis, you see that they don't hold water. The truth of the matter is that the consumer is going to pay more. And in an environment where the disposable income is low, where even the uh, much talked about increase in minimum wage is yet to fully take effect, in a situation where the environment is still, the manufacturing environment is still being suffocated by high uh, inventory of unsold goods, where the cost of manufacturing is still rising, where we are finding it very difficult to compete with foreign goods, increasing VAT is going to be counterproductive. It's going to compound 
the problem of uh, lack of sales and it's going to make us uh, uncompetitive. The argument that not all items are affected, I mean, if you look closely, you will see that some of the purchases that are made in the course of manufacturing those products are vatable. So if you do not put VAT at the final product, but you have put VAT at the input, the price you are going to place on your product will have suffered VAT. And so the consumer is going to have to pay more. Oil prices slipped on Friday as Russia said it would need more time before committing to output cuts amid falling demand for crude as China battles with the coronavirus epidemic. Brent crude futures fell 60 cents to $54.33 a barrel and we're heading for a fifth weekly loss due to persistent concerns over the impact of the virus. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were down 70 cents at $50.25 a barrel, also heading for a fifth consecutive week of losses. Russian Foreign Minister said on Thursday that Moscow supported cooperation with other producers in remarks which appeared to boost prices in early trading. We'll take a short break here and return with Stock Market Review. Please stay tuned. The NSC is rapidly decelerating from its early gains at the beginning of the year in January 2020. Today, the market returned uh, to the negative territory after the bulls appeared on the floor of the market yesterday to end the nearly two weeks reign of the bears. As the NSC prepares for demutualization, the market reversed all the gains from um, previous session, and that's from the one-day breakthrough uh, yesterday to close the week at 0.26. Uh, percent lower. At the close of transactions today, over 300 million uh, units of shares worth 6.3 billion naira exchange hands in 4,243 deals. And moving on to the top gainers, we see that uh, the chart was led by Flower Mill. We also have Julius Berger and uh, Dangote Sugar and BUA Cement also made significant gains on the floor of the market today. On the, uh, on the flip side, the losers, MTN Nigeria, Cadbury, and um, CNI Leasing, Guarantee Trust Bank, all failed to perform well on the floor of the market today. Moving on to the foreign scene, it was all bearish. Uh, basically, what's happening is global stocks are generally down as coronavirus fear grip uh, investors. And that's it from here. It's back to you, Aneta. Thanks, Oi. Moving on now, Chinese scientists have confirmed that the endangered pangolin may be the link that facilitated the spread of the novel coronavirus across China. Researchers have long suspected that the virus, which has now killed more than 630 people and infected some 31,000 others, was passed from an animal to a human at a market in the central Chinese city of Wuhan late last year. After testing more than 1,000 samples from wild animals, scientists from the university found the genome sequences of viruses found on pangolin to be 99% identical to those on coronavirus patients. The pangolin is considered to be the most trafficked animal on the planet, and more than 1 million have been snatched from Asian and African forests in the past decade. And that's according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Two-time CAF Champions League winner Aimba of Abba will be up against Horoya FC of Guinea in the quarterfinal of this year's CAF Confederation Cup. This was revealed during the draw ceremony for the last days, which took place on Wednesday evening at the Hilton Permits Golf Hotel in Cairo. Ayimba, who has won the CAF Champions League back-to-back -back in 2003 and 2004, is aiming to be the first Nigerian club side to win the CAF Confederation Cup. The first leg of the double-leg fixture will see Ayimba host Horoya FC in Abba on March 1st, before travelling to Conakry seven days later for the return leg. The Fatayo show led side is presently 15 on the EPL table with 17 points in 13 games with five outstanding games. And that's it. News now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Thanks for watching.